the next method of a, a grassroot, the next grassroots solution for consciousness change that we can employ is to begin to detach from our support for those acting in the role of dominator. This is a very important one and a very difficult one for many people to really comprehend and to really come to terms with because often these are people we know in our lives, that we love in our lives, and that we may understand when we come up to a high enough level of consciousness really aren't helping the situation. In fact, if we understand how the dynamics of creation work, they're really imbalancing the situation more and more and more and more. So we have to try to educate ourselves about what is happening in, in these instances and then try to bring that information to the people involved in these roles to the extent that they are capable of understanding it. Gerald Massey, Egyptologist, said, they must find it difficult, those who have taken authority as truth rather than truth as authority. The truth is the authority. Authority is not truth. It is not true that there is authority. But the truth, it itself is the authority that we need to live in compliance with. The dominators of the world have it exactly the other way around. They believe that there is such a thing as authority and the right to control others externally. And I'm not saying everyone should be running around doing whatever they feel like doing to people. That isn't what I'm saying either. I'm saying that control is really not the answer. Proper education is the answer. Properly educating people and getting them to, to live in harmony with natural law, not because they fear punishment, not because they fear reprisal, but because they have recognized the laws of creation, natural law that is in operation around them, and they understand that living in harmony with that is the only thing that can bring order to their lives. So these are the dominators of our culture, like the stormtroopers in Star Wars, the clones, so to speak, those who are exactly the same as each other and who think the same and act the same and follow orders like robotically programmed drones. And that's what the mind control of, of indoctrination that these people are put through, to this regimented system of hierarchy and chain of command, it's what it is all about. It is about programming the mind to react the reactive mind, the reptile brain, they're trapped in the R complex of the brain, base consciousness. And as such, again, I said this in part one, these are the most oppressed people. They're the most oppressed. We may think of them as oppressors and that they may act in, in their roles, they may act as oppressors. However, they're actually the most oppressed themselves because their consciousness is actually the most devastated out of anybody's. And if you really looked at a, at a very deep, focused controller's brain, if you looked at a, a PET scan or a SPECT scan of their brain, you would see that the neocortex is in utter disarray. The, the, the chemical coherence of, 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 of the electrochemical activity of the neocortex is devastated. In, in a dominator's brain because it is so imbalanced toward the left hemisphere that they are so driven by the, the reptile instinct and they're so driven by adrenal rushes that the neocortex is in a very bad state of disrepair. It's physical brain damage is what it really is. Not to be extremely harsh about it, but that's what it is. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about a physical disease. If you looked at the neocortex of some of these individuals, you would see that this is a physical pattern of brain damage that is actually done to their neocortex through these levels of mind control and imbalance. These are people who are in need of healing not to be hated or to be derided and, and, and spat upon or anything like that or looked down upon. We need to heal these people. They need healing more 
significantly than most other people. That is how damaged their consciousness has become. So, this is like uh, Anakin Skywalker, who had the best of intentions, you know, growing up as a, as a young Jedi, and, but he became bent on control. He, he became, he went down the ideology that control was the answer, and in doing so, he gave over to fear, the dark side of the Force, the dark polarity, and he became Vader. He lost his true self. He became, uh, you know, he went into the consciousness of selflessness, lost the connection with the true self, and he becomes the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader. And this is how, this is what really happens in controller jobs. They start with the best of intentions, and it really descends into br brutality and coercion, and simply issuing orders and following orders, and it's all about control. That's what it descends into. It's just about I'm acting as God, and I will say what is true, and I will say what goes, and, and what you're going to do. So it's, it's a form of slavery, and uh, that's what all control, external control is. It's illusion to create opposition and slavery, when in fact, really, these people doing these jobs aren't the real enemy. They're oppressed by the enemy as much as we are, but they're just getting them to become oppressors like the sorcerers at the highest levels are. They're fu it's, like, it's like a psychological rape, if you really want to look at it, or a condition where uh, one is beaten when young, or raped when young. Okay, when we encounter psychological traumas like this, we go into defense mechanisms, and we decide one of two things. We either decide to identify with the master and become like them, or we go into shutdown mode. And we identify with a, a being that likes to be treated severely. So it becomes either one becomes a sadist or oftentimes a masochist. But more often than not, the abuser, uh, I'm sorry, the one who is abused, decides to act in the strength role, what they perceive to be the strength role, and they then become the abuser to enact that brutality down the line onto the next generation. So that is the kind of psychological trauma that these people really undergo at a fundamental level. And again, they need healing. That's what they ultimately need. See, the idea is it's okay if we act like that. Many people will see it like that. It's not fascism if we do it. We can go out and bomb countries that didn't attack us and kill innumerable amounts of children. We can go and create uh, torture facilities, but that isn't fascism because we've done it and we're the good guys. Well, it doesn't work that way. It still is fascism, and those who are enabling it are part of it, and those who are enact these things are part of it. And they're as involved as the people that came up with these ideas and decided to enact them to begin with. They would have no ability to enact these things if they wouldn't have people willing to go along with it. And that's the same with any war scenario. Wars cannot be fought if there are no soldiers who are willing to go off and fight wars. And that is on both sides. That is on both sides of the conflict. That is how war will be put to an end. When people come to a level of consciousness where they, they understand that they're not going to be controlled and manipulated anymore, and they're not going to be manipulated into fighting wars for rich men that don't give a damn about them, that are only there to profit from the endeavor. That's what our wars are ultimately fought about. And here's a person who is all too happy to explain that to you in the most overt terms. Henry Kissinger, a military strategist who actually comes up with the designs for positioning and strategies for engagements and, and, and helps to create strategies for positioning troops, makes a statement like this. Military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. Here's one of the chess masters, folks, telling you himself that he doesn't give a damn about you. He doesn't care about you at all. At all. You're a dumb, stupid animal to him. This is one of the people deciding where you're going to go off to fight. You're a dumb, stupid animal to him, to be used as pawns 
in a game of chess. He's the chess master positioning you, the dumb, stupid animal, on the board, on the floor of the house, a wanderer between light and darkness, never knowing which is which. So people have to make up their minds. Do they want to wage war for people like this? Because that's really who's sending people off to war. They're never fighting. People like this never fight their own wars. They don't fight their own battles. They sit back behind the scenes, call the shots like the, like the gods that they think they are. And they send the poor and the, the shut down in consciousness off to war to wage battles for them so that they can prosper and profit. It's all about who benefits. Who gains is the question that needs to be asked. So in fact, in fact, I understand people like this believe that they're doing something positive. They believe they're supporting people. They're not really acting in the best interest of the people that they, th they think they are acting in the best interest of. Uh, you know that they may love the people that they're supporting. They think they're supporting in these instances. Yes, they love them, but the, the action that they're taking to support their family members who are going to go off to war isn't really helping them. They need to help them to raise their conscious awareness so that people will decide not to fight these senseless wars of human sacrifice because that is ultimately what war is and always has been. It is a ritual of human sacrifice and they're all too happy to wrap the soldiers up in all the occult emblems all over them before they go off and send them off on the altar of sacrifice. That's all war is, that's all war ever has been, and that's all war ever will be. It's a human sacrifice ritual. And the object is, don't support this. Explain to people what a, that it's a scam to make the rich richer. And to do away with people that they look at as dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. We need to not support the dominator culture, the dominator ideology. We need to help people to understand that war is wrong in whatever context it is fought in. The researcher David Icke explained this so brilliantly, I had to put this whole quote in the presentation because it encapsulates perfectly what I think about people who make these decisions to go and fight these wars. David Icke said, accept responsibility for yourself and your actions, thoughts, and words. You alone make choices. You alone are answerable, answerable to the consequences of your behavior. The feeble excuse that the establishment expected it holds no truth or justification. What is the point of having principles if you allow others to dictate your behavior. At the end of the day, you will judge your performance and the contribution you have made to creation. It will not be based on what another expected of you or what you did because you felt trapped. And how often do we hear that? I had no choice. It's something I had to do. I didn't have anywhere else to go or anything else to do or any other way to live. You hear this as an excuse all the time for why people go off and fight the wars that they fight. This is a cop-out. This is doing something because you felt trapped and you feel that it's expected of you. And that justification holds no truth. We are answerable to our own actions. And what we do in any given circumstances, no matter what was threatened of us, no matter who said that they would do something harmful to us in return, we take that action of our own will and of our own accord. And we are answerable to the consequences of our own actions. That's what needs to be understood. And in this role, in this helping, this process of healing, women can play an immensely powerful role and have and will continue to have an incredibly powerful effect in this understanding of what the dominator culture is all about and help to explain and talk with and really delve into the psychological makeup of the men that they love because let's face it, most of the people enacting this domination are men. Okay, they're, they're, they're physically 
uh, stronger of the sexes uh, as far as a, uh, a physical build and physical makeup and, and, and physical strength. So they're the ones who are really employed as this strong arm for the force that the, the sorcerers need to enact their will. And women will play a role because every uh, you know brother in this in this dominator culture, every son, every husband, every father, they have women around them in their lives, and these women can really get into their psychology, get into their psyche, get into their emotional makeup, and have discussions with them and talk with them about what they're being used for. If you understand what this is about, you understand how these men are being used and manipulated, you need to discuss it, not suppress it. It needs to be brought out in the open and discussed so that you can begin to help these individuals go through the process of worldview healing and understand how they're being used as a pawn. That's simply how it is, and that's, that's the role that we need to actively take. The non-support of dominators, and one of the biggest roles to be played in this endeavor is the, the role that women will play in, in helping to heal that imbalance in consciousness.